and welcome to my 25th video. Thank you so much for joining me if you are a return subscriber or hello if you are new. My name is Adrina. I'm an Australian teacher, a teacher's pay teacher seller and a mum. So things get a little bit crazy around here. Now in today's video I'm going to try and make this as quick and succinct as I can but basically I'm going to be showing you how to create a brush stamp in Procreate. Now for anyone that is wondering how brush stamps work basically I'm going to show you very quickly here I've got my iPad and I've got Procreate up. I go to a new layer and I choose the brush that I just made, my brush stamp brush called the Squiggle Brush, and I can show you how these brushes work. So basically you can use them in your artworks and you can use them as a repetitive thing. You can make them bigger or smaller. I can make it smaller as you can see or I can increase the size and I can make the stamp bigger. So basically Stamps are really fun to make because you can do a lot of different things with them and you can use them in your artworks over and over again without having to draw them every single time. So if that is something that you'd like to learn using Procreate in about 10 easy steps, then keep on watching. Let's get straight into the tutorial. Okay guys, so to start this tutorial we're firstly going to open up Procreate. Next, we are going to then create a new canvas. Now, the two canvases that I would recommend is either a 3000 by 3000 pixel canvas or a 2048 by 2048 canvas. So, in this case, we can just do this square, one that's already preset into Procreate, click on that, and it'll open up our new canvas. That's step one. Step two is we're going to be using the monoline brush. To find the monoline brush, just click the paintbrush up the top, which is the brush library, scroll all the way down to the bottom till you find calligraphy, and you'll find monoline. You can choose whatever brush you'd like, but the reason why we're using monoline for this particular example is because monoline is a very nice and even weighted brush that is easy to use. That's why I've chosen monoline to create this stamp. Once you've got that, we are going to then go out of the brush library and we are going to turn the background color off. So then you're left with just a blank transparent kind of screen. Now, when we're drawing our stamp, we have to make sure that it is in the color white. You can make sure that you're using the most purest color of white by double clicking in the color wheel and you'll see it zips all the way to the edge. Once you've got a pure white, then you're going to draw your stamp. Your stamp could be a love heart, it could be a circle, it could be a regular shape, it could be a dollar sign, it could be a music note. It can be whatever you would like to create. The limit is your imagination. In my case, just for the purpose of this video, I'm going to show you how to do a squiggle. So I'm just going to, with the monoline brush, at maximum, as you can see in the left hand corner there, and I'm just going to draw some squiggles. They don't have to be fancy, they don't have to be perfect. Okay, that's my squiggle. So let's now just click the arrow up the top here just to make it a little bit bigger, just so it can fill in the canvas that little bit more. Perfect. So to create a custom folder, we need to click on the brush library and we're going to go and scroll all the way up to the top until we see this blue button here with the plus sign. We're going to click that and you'll see it's led to a little section that says untitled set. We're just going to rename that and we're going to call it my brush stamps. My brush stamps. You can call it though whatever you like. Once we've got a custom folder, we are then going to go and duplicate the monoline brush. So to do that, we just need to go back into this brush library. We can scroll all the way down back to where we were in the calligraphy section and we are going to duplicate this monoline brush by just sliding it to the left and clicking duplicate. Once we have the duplicated version of that particular brush or whatever brush you've chosen, then we are going to now move it into our custom folder. So this part is a little tricky, so be careful when you do it because sometimes it can get a little bit messed up. So just hold it down with your pen and use one finger to scroll all the way up to the top or wherever your folder is, click on the folder and then just carefully drag it in. Once you've got that, then we are going to move on to the next step and that is editing your brush. 
So to edit the brush, we are going to click on the mono line. But first, when we are in this section, we are going to rename the brush. This is important so that we know what brush it is going to be and so that things don't move around. I have had a little play around with this and I found that if I don't rename the brush to begin with, then sometimes it doesn't save. I just recommend naming your brush first. So in this case, I'm going to name this a squiggle brush because I'm making a squiggle brush. Perfect. So once we've edited the name of our brush, now it's time to move on to the next step, which is editing the settings. So now that we've just renamed the brush, you'll see it's, it's, it looks exactly like the monoline brush and that's because we haven't changed any of the features of it yet. And that'll be in the editing process of this brush. But before we can do that, we need to go out of the brush library and we actually need to go to layers. We need to click the arrow here and we actually need to copy this, this image. You can do that by using three fingers and sliding down. That will bring up a menu and all you need to do is press copy. So once we've copied our image or our brush stamp that we're going to be making then we can go back into the library and back into my brush stamps back into the brush that we were just playing around with and then we're going to go straight to shape this is how we're going to create the brush so to create this stamp we're going to look at this bar here which says shape source we're going to click this white circle and we are going to click import and we're just going to click paste once we've clicked paste, you can see that our squiggle has shown up here. That is why we need to create the first initial stamp in white so it does show up here as a source. If it was in a different color, it wouldn't work. So once you've done that, click done. And you'll notice that the shape source has changed. The only thing is, there are a few settings that we still need to change because if I'm to draw here, you'll notice that it just looks like a squiggly line. If I'm to use it as a stamp, you'll see it looks so tiny and it doesn't resemble anything of a squiggle right now. So, to be able to turn it into our proper squiggle stamp, then we just need to clear this and we're going to move on to the actual editing side of the brush. So we've changed our shape source. There's three things that I like to look at on a basic level. Again, all of these in the left hand column here allow you to change and alter your brush into any way that you like but the three main sections I like to look at are these stroke path, stabilization and properties. We've already named the brush in the about this brush so we don't need to worry about that but these are the three so stroke path, stabilization and properties. What I'm going to show you now is how I go about changing the options. So first of all I go to stroke path. Now you can see the spacing is at 17% I make sure that that spacing is all the way to max. The reason for it is because if I'm to if I'm to use my brush you can see that it's going to have some spaces in between if I don't set it to max then I will have a lot less space in between and for this brush I need some space so I change the spacing all the way up to max second stabilization I don't really need to change too much here I just need to make sure that the amount of streamline this is what we're looking at streamline is on max and it is so I don't need to change anything else and I can clear drawing pad the reason why we want to keep it at max just so the experience of the brush is nice and free flowing and easy to use the next section that I'm going to be looking at is properties. Now this is the most important part because, let's just clear that, because this is where it's going to show us the size. So in brush behavior I just like to change it all the way up to max so when I see it on my screen I can see that it resembles more of a squiggle like I've intended my brush to look like. Now because they look quite small there there is a way for you to change it on screen to make it look a little bigger so you can see it better but first we need to clear the drawing pad and if you see underneath brush properties you've got preview let's just bring that up to about 50% and if you tap you'll be able to see your squiggle brush a lot better. Now this preview basically just shows you on screen what it is going to look like but not only that it also shows you how it looks once you go off the brush studio. This preview number here will show you how big it looks like at that percentage so if you clear it and you go higher so you make it all the way max you'll see it looks a lot bigger and again the same if you go all the way down you'll see the preview as a lot smaller and that's basically what your squiggle brush is going to look like. Now once you've edited all of those we've made sure that this, it's already named squiggle brush. Now we're going to click done. And you'll see here that it has a preview of the squiggle brush. Now the next step is to test your brush. Just to test your brush, all you need to do is just hide this layer, create a new layer, 
and you can choose whatever color you'd like you can stick to white if you really wanted to let's just go for an orange and you can play around with this see how I've got it at max so it's at size 100 that's what it's going to look like at size 100 so let's go back by double tapping let's move it down to 32 percent you can see my squiggle brush looks like that if I bring it even smaller you can see what that looks like at a smaller rate okay perfect so we know that our brush works now you've tested out your squiggle brush and now we are just, I'm going to show you two last little tips. So if we go back to our library, see how you can see the squiggle brush size. If we go back into that brush studio and we went to properties again, you can bring this down and you'll see the size, but you'll see this at a smaller level. If I click done, see how it changed what it looks like as a preview on your squiggle brush. If you wanted to see it as a bigger preview, just click it again, go to that use the preview a lot bigger, click done and you'll see it comes up a lot bigger. One more tip if you are wanting to edit your brush a little bit further is you can go into shape and you can actually change the rotation and the scatter of the brush. So I'll show you what it looks like without. So you can see that's sort of what it looks like without. Let's just clear that. Now if I wanted to change the scatter you can see how it turns it, it turns it all the way around and so when you are using your brush it'll be like Kind of randomized and scattered around it won't just be one way if you don't want that to be the case just turn that all the way down the same with the rotation if I wanted to change the rotation it's at zero percent now but if I want to change the rotation to make it diagonal mindful of how it actually affects it and just have a little play around with this for my for this brush I however I'm just going to keep it at zero as I want it to be stagnant and the way that it is sure. Okay, so that is how you create your brush. Now you can use your brush in your own artwork. So let's just have a little play with my newly made brush. If I go back to gallery, if I open up a new canvas, let's do a paper canvas, 11 times 8.5. And let's just use some of the brushes that I've just recently created. So, so I had a little play around and I did create some organic shape brushes. So this is a stamp that I created a little bit earlier, which is just like an organic shape brush. You can see that. And again, you can create whatever kind of brushes that you like. If I add another layer on top, then I can add a bit more detail. If I wanted to add just a singular one, I can add one single colored one. Let's do a brown. And I can actually just click the arrow and I can move it to however I want. As you can see, I can move it to how I like. And then to add a little bit of extra, let's add another layer and let's use the squiggle brush that I created. So that was my other squiggle brush that I made. This is a squiggle brush I made just with you guys in this tutorial. So let's choose a kind of yellowy color. Oh, so we need to make sure that's a bit bigger. You can see how that you can use that over the top of your artwork to make digital paper or whatever you like and one last tip too if you are wanting to add a little bit of more dimension into this you can have a little play around with the colors so if you go into this adjustments tool you can go to hue saturation and brightness and you can just move this tool down you can see what suits your your digital paper or whatever you're creating nicely. So I kind of really like that. That looks quite nice. I can even change these up with the color of these. I can make them less saturated, more saturated. I can add a little bit of color and change the color in that. Add it to be darker or brighter. And yeah. So yeah, you can do lots of different things with your newly made brushes. So, that's that. 
Okay guys, that is the tutorial. Thank you so much for coming along with me and creating a Procreate brush. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you learned something new. And most of all, I hope that you were able to create your own Procreate brush. If you did, please feel free to let me know down below what kind of brush did you make? I'm actually really curious to know. Did you make a love heart brush? Did you make a squiggle brush like me? Did you make a music note brush? Did you make something completely random? Let me know down below. I'd love to know what people are creating. <laughs> and now you know how to make Procreate brushes, maybe you can have a go at making your own digital paper and using your Procreate brushes in your digital paper or just creating artworks using your new made brushes. Thank you so much for watching guys. I will see you in my next video. Adios.